uh, hometown. I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, I played two sports, so I, I played football. And I was also on the track team. Uh, did you know indoor, which I know is now going away, actually. But I did indoor and outdoor track. And my major, uh, I did a bachelor of individualized studies, and so marketing was my primary focus. And then sociology and African American studies were my minors. Uh, theme song for Black History. Man, that that that's a tough one. <laughs> I need to, you know, I was I was everywhere from. Um, you know, fight the power <laughs> with, oh, okay. yeah. you know, with, uh, you know, with public enemy that always, you know, kind of gets me hyped up and then, you know, lift every voice and sing, you know, kind of in those two areas. So I'd have to, so I'd go with those two, depending on the mood I'm in on that, on that specific day. Other um, award to your long list, doing some research, first ever academic All-American at the University, Black academic All-American at the University of Minnesota. When, when I text you that, and then you wrote me back and I said, this is what the research says, how, how did that make you feel? And then where were you when you got your plaque that said academic All-American? Yeah, when you texted me that, I, for, I was like, wait, what? That can't be right. That was like 93, like 94, 93, 94. That was my last se season. And I was like, that can't be right. So it was more of a surprise and, and shock, to be honest, um, given all the great players that had you know preceded me. I know you think of even a, a, a Mac Boston. Yeah. Um, and, so, and there's a lot of other great players who were great business people as well uh, and I'm sure they were strong students as well so I was just surprised um, that I'd be the first um, so even even to this moment I'm still shocked a little bit like wow okay that that's that's surprising um, and humbling and, and as well um, in terms of the plaque itself um, I don't remember when I actually got the plaque per se I remember when I was told okay and I was I was in the um, I was in the complex and um, one of the academic um, counselors told me, like, hey, congratulations, you got academic All-American. And again, I was like, what? <laughs> I got what? I, didn't, I wasn't even sure my GPA was high enough at the time. I thought I had to have a 4.0 um, GPA. And I had a high you know, um, GPA, uh, well above 3.0, but I just thought you had to have a 4.0 GPA. Um, but and then as I looked at some other teammates as well who, who won the awards, I was like, okay. And, um, it was just surprising, and my father was the most proud of everything I've done, even getting a chance to get into the NFL. Um, the thing I know my father, who's now passed, was most proud of himself was academic, you know, me re becoming academic All-American, because my parents had put such emphasis on education. Um, and so seeing that play out, I know that was one of the proudest moments for him as well. What was, or what, yeah, yeah what was Black history? What did it mean to you before the summer? And now what does it mean for you after the summer? Yeah, Last summer, I should say. Yeah, Black History Month, um, before the summer, then after the summer. Um, it was a reminder that while it's, um, it's important to have a month that tries to highlight that, there still is so much more education that we have to do. And it's a continuous education right? Trying to, I still appreciate the, the month in terms of highlighting because um, there just isn't enough emphasis and focus put on, hey, here's some things we're going to educate you on. But we need to educate, educate people throughout the year <laughs> on, on Black history. But also, you know, working in a space I work with from a, uh, an HR standpoint, you think of diversity and inclusion even more holistically. There are so many other um, underrepresented groups who have stories that need to be told, you know, whether it's the, our Native American indigenous populations, you know, if, if, as an African American, we, if we think our history is untold, their history is completely erased. I have a dream is the backbone of all black history, education for blacks. How old were you and where were you the first time you heard it? You know, it's one of those things where I can't remember because it's so ubiquitous. <laughs> so like, it, it, like if you don't know anything, you hear parts of, of that, right? So I can't even, 
I can't even remember the first time I've heard it because I'm like, well, was it fifth grade or was it fourth grade? Because you just you you would hear it all the time over and over and over again. Uh, um, so I, I don't know when the first time I heard it. Okay. I will say this: every time I go back and read it, even as a forty-something, forty-eight-year-old, <laughs> uh, even to this day, when I'll go back and read it, you pick up something different, or or you, I, I can I'm reminded every time I hear it, and and more importantly, every time I read it, I'm like, this man, the, the brilliance <laughs> with with which he wrote and with which he spoke. Um, and the and the commentary within there, um, and the message to America, and the message to, to African Americans um, is so deep and so poignant. It's just something you like. It, it should be just required reading every two three months. You just go back and just dissect that bad boy and just understand what that represents and what what's being said. So, um, and then honestly, with, with Dr. King, it, it's there's so many things he's written. <laughs> and, and said that you just go back and you really dissect what he's what he has said. Um, it's really moving and stirring. It's still relevant to this day. Um, so that's the other thing that strikes me is that it's the the relevance uh, of that content. 